Good morning, everyone, and welcome to MAE 106, Discrete Mathematics with Probability. My name is Richard Carr, and this is lecture. This is lecture 19. Hopefully, the internet will hold up. Let's see. Hopefully, our connection is okay. So, this is lecture. This is lecture 19, and good morning. And let's do, these are some combination examples. And we're gonna do a little bit of Pascal's triangle. Okay, so the tests are slowly being sent back by email. Uh, as for, there's somebody asking about the average on the test. I'll post that on Moodle because just for privacy, um, not to be just announcing stuff like that on YouTube. So hopefully if, there, if everyone's okay with that, I generally just keep questions about um, course material, like a what we're talking about right now. But yes, I will post that through the Moodle webpage and you can see that. Um, oops. And also there's going to be a video with the test solutions, um, but that will be private. So everyone can see that, but that's something that is not going to be available though through YouTube. So I hope that answers that question. Yes, and that video is still uploading as we speak. It's just taking, or I think it's processing. I'm not sure. It takes a while. So in today's lecture, we're just going to do some combination examples. So let's do some exercises. So um, let's say that we have a standard deck of cards. And how many poker hands can we make up? So how many poker hands? Now poker hands, that's usually of five cards. Where they consist of. And we're going to say all red cards. Okay, so to figure this out, we are going to pick from how many cards? So if we want them to be all red cards, well, first of all, how many are there? How many red cards are there? Twenty six, that's right. There's twenty six red cards. Right, because we have the hearts, 
which there's 13, and the other ones would be the diamonds. So that would give you 13 for the hearts and 13 for the diamonds, which gives you 26. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick from those 26 red cards. And from that, so we have 26 red cards and we're going to choose five of them. And that's actually quite a large number. Because if we work this out, that would be 5, and then 26 minus 5, which is 21. So <clears throat> what I'm left with is 26 times 5 times 23 times 22, which is still quite large. So let me just pull that out. 26 times 5, 23 times. So that gets me 65,780. So that's the number of ways of picking all red hand, uh, sorry, red cards for a hand that has five. Okay, so the next one that we can do is all face cards. So do we have calculators for tests? And if the answers are going to be large like this, uh, yes, they can be. So again, there's no calculators at the moment. And simplify as best as possible. Sorry, why could you cancel out the 25 and the 24 in the denominator. Oh, so what I had up here was I had 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21 factorial, okay? So I canceled out the 21 factorial here. Um, what I was doing was I also have five factorial here. So I have five times four times three times two. So what I was doing here was 25 divided by five is five. So I wrote five up here. That's what I have, 26 times 5, so I left the 5 there. Then what I did was I did 24 divided by 4, which is 6. And then I had uh, I had 6 divided by 3, which was 2. And then I had 2 divided by 2, so that left me just with 1. That's what I was doing. So this one says all face cards. So that would be the jack, queen, and king. So that's three cards times four. So that would be that there's 12 cards. All right, so jack, queen, king, and then there's four suits. So that means that I have uh, 12, 12 cards, and I'm going to pick 5, 
So in this case, I have 12 factorial over 5. And then I have 12 minus 5. So, is that not 52 cards choose 12? No, what, what I'm doing here is, so I'm starting out with a standard deck of 52 cards, and then it says how many poker hands of five cards consist of, and then so they're all red cards, so then it's 26, so we're starting out with all the red cards, so it's 26 red cards, and we're going to choose five of them. So that worked out to about 65,000. There's all face cards. So then what I'm actually doing is I'm just kind of just restricting to what I want, right? So jack, queen, king times four, that's the 12. So now I'm choosing 12 cards, choose five. Just to let you know, my power is possibly ready to, okay. Good to know. Okay, yes. The nice thing with YouTube is that it'll keep recording as long as my power stays up and my connection is steady. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 12 times 11 times 10 times 8 times 7 factorial, so that cancels. So I'll do 12 times 11, 8. Then I'm left with 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. <coughs> okay, so when I'm left, I'll use some different colors. So for instance, I can do 10 divided by 5, so that's 2. And then the 2... 2 and 2, so 2 divided by 2, so that's just 1. Let's see, what else can I do? I can also use a different color pen. I have 12, so 12 goes into 4. That's 3 times. And then I can cancel out the 3. So I have 3 divided by 3, so that goes down to 1. So I have nothing left now in the denominator. So what I have left is 11 times 9 times 8. So 9 times 8 is 72. And we're multiplying by 11, so that is... 7 and 2, like goalposts, and then you add in the two numbers in the middle. So it's 7 plus 2 is 9. So the total number is 792. Okay, for the th for for C, let's say all the uh, how many poker hands are possible if they consist of all clubs? So in this case, there there are 13 clubs. So we're going to be there's 13 cards we're going to choose from, and from that we're going to pick five. Did the 9 not become a 3 when you divided the 3 in the denominator out? Nope. Because I can trace it right here. So what I had done here is... Okay, so the 10 went into the 5, there's twice. And then I cancelled out the 2 with that. Then I had the 12. So 12 divided by 4 is 3. And then I canceled that 3 with this 3 down here. So I was left with 1. So then in total, all I was left with was 11 times the 9 times the 8. Yeah. OK. 
Okay. So in the bottom here, I'll have 5 factorial times 8 factorial. So let's, I can simplify a little bit here. 10 goes into 5 twice. Then I can cancel out this 2 and that 2. So I'm left with 1. The 12 goes into 4. So that's 3 times. And then I can also cancel out this 3 with this denominator right down here. So there's the so three, so I'm all left with 13 times 11 times nine. So 13 times nine, that's 117. And then multiplying that by 11, One seventeen times eleven is twelve hundred and eighty seven. Okay. And let's see. So I done Okay, and then the last one is all even rank cards. So all even rank cards. So that would be, we had have two, four, six, eight, and 10. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And then there's four suits. So that gives me 20. And so what we should be getting is we should be selecting from 20, five of those cards. Just as a reminder, our formula for that combination, which was n factorial over r factorial, n minus r factorial. Okay, so we did that with um, a standard deck of cards. Let's do, here's a second one. So how about this one? Okay, so let's do this one. We have there's a bus shuttle. And it takes 15 students at a time.
Now, if there's 32 students waiting, Oh, would the queen not be counted as an even rank? Sorry, I didn't see this. Um, no, because it's not really assigned a number. That's called a face card. Some people count the jack, queen, king as a 10. For example, in, in, in uh, blackjack, but... She's <laughs> exactly. If there are 32 students waiting, so how many ways? So for the first trip, So again, there's a bus shuttle, there's 15 students at a time. If there's 32 students waiting, how many ways can you do it for the... You can't divide a person by two. <laughs> so on the first trip, you can have the shuttle... Um, you have 32, so we have 32 students that you can choose from. And from that, you're gonna pick 15. And on the second trip, what you have then is you can have 32 minus 15. So again, from the first trip, you will have 15 students that have already been transported. And then we're still going to pick another 15. So that would be... Uh, 32 minus 15, which gives me 17. Now this is quite a large number up here, but this one is fairly straightforward for us to... screwing that up. Okay. So I have 17 times 16 times 15. So that can cancel. And then I have um, 16 divided by 2, so that's just 8. So I'm left with 17 times 8. So 7 times 8 is 56. And then the 5 plus 8 gives me 13. So there's a 136 ways that the second trip could happen. The first trip is quite large because again, what I can show, here's the calculator. 32, enter, and we're going to choose 15. So that's a very large number. Okay, so let's do a third example.
So Alcide is packing his backpack or his knapsack to take with him to school. And he's got 10 heavy textbooks. So there's 10 heavy textbooks. but he can carry at most three of them in his bag. So, at most, he can carry three of them. What is the number of ways that he can select the books he brings to school? So. How many ways can he select the books? So the interesting part about this is at most, which means that you have cases. So we're going to have to take cases. So for the first case, he could take no books. He could take one book. He could take two books. And lastly, he could take three books. So for this, he could, there's 10 books, and he's going to choose none of them. Or he could have one book, so he's got 10 books, and he's going to choose one. Or he's got 10 books, and he can pick two. Or he can, he has 10 books and he's going to pick three. Okay, so by the sum principle, because we got no books or one book or two books or three books, so by the sum principle, We add them together. To get that. Now working through the arithmetic. How many ways are there to pick notebooks? Well, that's just one. You have 10 choices and you're picking just one, that's 10. This 10 choose 2 and this 10 choose 3 kind of requires a little bit of effort. So again, We can work this out. 10 choose 2 is 10 factorial over uh, 10 minus 2 factorial, 2 factorial. Hmm. The 2 goes into the 10 there's 5, so it's 5 times 9, which is 45. And for 10 choose 3, that's 10 factorial over 10 minus 3, 3 factorial. Okay. 
And I can divide out the 3 goes into 9 three times. And I can cancel out. Um, I'm going to do the 8. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. So I'm left with 10 times 3 times 4, which is 10 times 12, which is 120. So 10 to choose 2 is 45 plus 120. So uh, 120, OK, so let's do um, 120 plus 10 is 130. 130 plus 45 plus, 40, uh, plus another one gives me 176. combinations. Okay, so so we've done three examples. Okay, let's do one more. Okay, so I know I'm not writing with a ballpoint pen, but let's say that there's a package of... So there's a package of 12 pens. And let's suppose that four are defective. But we don't know which one are defective, so... The question then is, how many ways can you select? Oops. Select four pens from the box. Well, in that case, it's just 12 choose 4. If there are four pens that are not, so how many ways can we pick four pens that are not defective? Well, that would be, so we had 12 that we're starting with. We're going to not include then the four that are defective. And we're still going to pick four. So that means that there's eight pens that we need to pick from. And we're going to choose four of them. And lastly, how can we pick four pens that contain exactly two defective pens. So the way that we'll do that is we'll use the uh, multiplication principle. So we'll first, let's say that we pick, um, we pick first the two defective pens. So we know that there's four in total. So we're gonna pick from among the four defective pens we're going to pick two of them, it's exactly two.
and then this is by the multiplication principle for so we're multiplying it and then we have to pick well because we're picking um, four pens in total so we need to pick two non-defective pens so we got to pick two of them but what we need to also remember is that there's 12 and we're going to just remove the ones that are defective so we're going to ensure that these are non-defective so that means that what we're looking for is four choose two so we're we have four defective pens we're picking two and then from the remaining eight non-defective pens we're going to pick another two Now we can, these numbers are small enough that we should be able to do them. minus 2 it's just 2 factorial so cancel one of those times So I have 4 times 3, I have 2 factorial, times 2, and I have 8 times 7, mm -hmm. okay, so the 4 divided by 2 is 2 and then I also have four, uh, 8 divided by 2 is 4 so what I'm left with is 2 times 3 times 4 times 7 so I have 6 times 28 12 plus 4 gives me 16. Gives me 168. What I'm going to do is, so some people might find that doing that a little bit tedious. It's 
So let me just introduce to you the idea of Pascal's triangle. So Pascal's triangle was kind of known by the French mathematician Blaise Pascal from 1623 to 1662, and he called it an arithmetic triangle. So what he had noticed as, um, for instance, what he did was he set up, he did one right at the beginning. And then what he did was he looked at two points to the left or the right of it. So he went to, there was one way to go down this. So he said, okay, this is one. And to go down this way, there's only one. And he continued this pattern. So what he did was he had like this kind of grid. You can think of it either way. You can spin it this way so that you've kind of got uh, a right angle there. But what he did then was he said, how many ways can I get to this point? Well, there was one way to get to this one, and so it continues to here as well, that to get to this point, there's only one way, which was to go to this point and then to this point. The same thing he did for here. To get to this point down here, there's only one path. There was one path to get to this, and so there's only one path to get to this one as well. However, to get to this middle one, what he saw was there was a path to get to this from, from this side, and he also got a path to come from here. So in total, there was two paths to get to this point. And he, can, he can kept continuing on. So again, to get to this path down here was just one. And there was only one way still to keep coming down this edge here. So there was one. But what he noticed then, again, if he was going to go down to this interior point. So there was one path to get to here, but then to get to this one, there was two paths. So it was two plus three. Sorry, two plus one give you three. So that's what he was doing, was he was adding them together. And same thing over here for this point. There is two paths to get to here from this right-hand side, and only one path to get from the left hand. So 1 plus 2 gives you 3. And what he noticed was these were ways of combinations. What he was finding was, for this point, there was, for instance, he said there was no objects and you're picking none of them. There's only one way to do that. And then working with one object, there is one way, uh, sorry, with one object, you can pick none of them, so there's only one. And the other one is that there's one object, and you're picking one. So that's still just one. On this one, so you can think of it as this is zero objects that you're picking from. Here is one object. Here's a set of two objects. So there's 
three ways of doing this. So you can have two objects and you pick none of them. So that's still one way. You can have two objects and you're going to pick one of them. So there's two ways to do that. And you can have two objects and you pick all of them. And there's only one way to do this. And the same thing for this one. This one would be three objects. So there's three objects and you're picking none of them, so that's still one. There's three objects and you're going to pick one of them. There's three ways to do this. There's three objects and you're going to pick two of them. That's three ways to do that. And you have three objects and you're going to pick all of them. That There's only one way to do that. So. What's powerful about this is that you can construct some Pascal's triangle using just the simple uh, arithmetic. So what I've done is I got 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 1 is 3. Down this one I have 1 plus 3 is 4, 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 4. Now it's the same thing. 1 plus 4 is 5. 4 plus 6 is 10. 6 plus 4 is 10. 4 plus 1 is 5. And I can keep going down further. 1 plus, uh, so I can do 1 plus 5 is 6. 5 plus 10 is 15. 10 plus 10 is 20, 10 plus 5 is 15, and 5 plus 1 is 6. So what's kind of nice about that is now I've quickly done, this is for picking 6 objects, so that would be 6 choose 0, so there's one way to do that. I have 6 choose 1. So this is six objects. I'm going to pick one. There's six ways to do that. I have six choose two, which is 15 ways to do that. Six choose three is 20. Six choose four. Six choose five. And six choose six. So now you have a quick way of constructing a, a small table of values that you can use to quickly calculate your combinations. Thank you everyone for tuning in. And again, keep an eye out for emails. I will They're slowly trickling out the tests. And... Um, if there's any questions, feel free to send me an email. Thank you for tuning in. Have a great day.